High Rise Mystery, Chapter 36. I'm over Mark, you know. He's well distracting and I gotta focus. I'm done. Hope so, I replied, knowing that she'd be done for about four hours max. That's for the best. We're too young for love, anyway. Now our priorities are in the correct order. We put Ringo on his lead. Bye, Pap, I shouted down the hall. Just walk in, Ringo, OK? Pap looked back at us. Absolutely, as long as you promise to keep yourselves to yourselves. I didn't dare look at Norva. I simply nodded. Sure, Pap, said Norva. Of course. And we were gone. When Mark gets out of this lift, I'll do the talking, said Norva. I'm ready to ask questions. Dig deep. I'm sure you are, I replied. The lift arrived. It was empty. Hmm, said Norva. Maybe he's at Serena's then. We got in. The three flats on 3rd Avenue had identical red doors. I knocked on Serena's. No answer. Where did they go then? I asked Norva. She narrowed her eyes. Not here, evidently. Maybe the hub? I leant over the avenue and looked across the try. A quiet afternoon. Hot again. 32 degrees. Where is everyone? I said. Norva shrouded. Calm before the storm, probably. I looked at her quizzically. What do you mean? I don't know. Something's stirring in my waters. Also, I just like saying it. Ignore me. Good advice. I took it. I turned to look back at the flats, the three red doors and the doormats. I rolled my eyes at George's. Welcome back, I scoffed. Don't hate. It's on brand, at least, said Norva. I looked closer at the walkway, around the mats, yellow footprints. Norva, look, I pointed. I crouched to take a closer look. I didn't notice these earlier. The footprints were large, much bigger than our feet, at least. The prints looked fresh, mostly. I touched one and a small amount of paint stuck to my fingertip. Mildly tacky, I whispered. Yeah, like you, laughed Norva. Funny, I looked up at her. These prints look familiar, Norva. I bet, she said wearily. I reached for my phone. I took a photograph. I flicked back between the new photo and the photo of Pap's boots. A match, of course. I pushed my phone in Norva's face and switched between the photographs. She dismissed me. Sure, they're paps, but so what? He was here Saturday, painting. We be new, old intel. But these are fresh, Norva, I said. He was painting today, though, she replied. Yeah, but at the hub, not up here. I was silent. All right, I hear you, she said. Even if he was lying, which he wasn't, what do fresh prints prove at this point? I don't know, Norva, I said desperately, but the police might probably match these to Paps and draw incorrect conclusions. Norva nodded, maybe. What if someone's trying to frame him, I added. This could be a good way to do it. Maybe. Let's see where they lead. To do. Find out why Paps' boot prints were on 3rd Avenue. We walked between the flats and the chute, back and forth. The prints were everywhere. We followed them from George's flat to the chute, from Serena's to the chute, from Jane's flat to the chute. What the hell is this, said Norva. This is whack. Didn't realize Pap was so freaking messy. He's out here like a preschooler with a potato stamp. He's not messy, I said. This can't be him. He was at the first aid course this morning. What is this? We walked back to the chute. It was out of order. Of course, cordoned off, covered in blue and white tape. Katie's work, probably. Still hums bad, even with, you know, Hugo gone, Norva said. And now it's part of the crime scene. It won't be cleared for at least a week, I'm guessing. Or until they've made an arrest, I replied. Norva nodded. 
This is the only time I've been glad we don't have the shoot on 22, she said. This stench would end me. It was foul. The tenants deserve a discount, I said. Norva laughed. No chance. There was a camera hanging above the avenue, pointed at the shoot. Norva peered at it. What's the time, Mr. Wolf? she asked, staring into it. 1437. Why? No answer. She looked down at her braids, flicked them aside and gave the camera a peace sign. She made an, an idiotic kissing face. Really, Norva? All right, all right, I'm done, I'm done, she said, holding up her hands. Timeline marked. She ducked onto the police tape and opened the chute. As it creaked open, a strong cloud of stench wafted up. Hello, Norva shouted into the void. She breathed in the fog and immediately gasped. Regrets, she said between coughs. We looked into the chute and down into the refuse area. Oi! Officer Bennett shouted up at us. You're officially trespassing. This is a murder scene and you know it. So sorry, officer, Norva shouted. Our mistake. Ringo barked, backing up Norva. Officer Burnett's radio buzzed noisily and he reached for it. The voice at the other end was garbled to us, but the message was very clear to him. Copy that. Over, he said, walking briskly away. We ran to the lift.